John, uh, Damien Duff, your former international uh, colleague, uh, reports have said that uh, you were left out to dry, hung out to dry by the FAI. What do you think of that? No, oh, look, Damien's, uh, Damien's entitled to his opinion. Um, I haven't obviously seen the the full, because I'm sure when you see the full quotes and the full story, etc. Um, but no, I don't feel like that's the case, and Damien's uh, more than entitled to his opinion. But explain to me your, your situation with regard to this window. Have you been given any guarantees? Because the new um, interim CEO has said that you could be in line for the job full time. The guarantee I've been given, Tony, is I'm in charge for the Hungary and Portuguese game. That's uh, what I'm fully focused on. I mean, the staff are fully fo focused on it now over the next two weeks, obviously, to hopefully get a couple of wins in those games. Um, first and foremost, focusing on Hungary. It'll be a tough test, but one we hope we can get a good result from at the Aviva. If you do get good results, does it strengthen your hand for getting the gig full time? Look, good results will always strengthen your hand for anything. Um, the re results business, uh, football. So hopefully, that is the case. But let's uh, let's just wait and see. Does it mean that these games are more important to John O'Shea than they are to Hungary or Portugal? <laughs> no, they're very important to Hungary and Portugal because they're obviously going to a major tournament. It's what we, as a country, want to be doing, and we want to be playing against teams uh, that are preparing us for a major tournament. So. We're doing that this time round, and uh, hopefully we can put on a good performance, and that'll lead to good results, Tony. A number of players missing that I'm sure you'd like to have, but I'd like to talk about a player that you've called in that has accepted the call. Can you tell me about Tom Cannon? Did you, did you talk to him? <coughs> yeah, he committed to Ireland. Yeah, I spoke to Tom a couple of times. Um, obviously, tried to get him in for the for the March window if possible, because um, obviously I've seen Tom in the under 21s. And I know kind of what talent he is, what type of striker he is, and um, managed to speak to him. And I just said, look, just take your time with it. Hopefully, um, I spoke to him, him and his agent as well, and just to kind of say, look, take your time, and when you're ready, just get back in touch with me. And thankfully, they did. They got back in touch, and we were able to obviously have another conversation. Um, he was with him and he was with his family when I spoke to him, so they were very happy and uh, very proud to be obviously committing to to the Republic of Ireland. And is that commitment locked in? Do you believe? Because we've had players before. I don't need to go through it with you. Who've played? I can only I, I can only take a person at uh, the, the the conversation we had, and uh, he's 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 looking forward and excited to come in for these for these two games and. Let's see. I'm sure it will be the case that he will be committed. Some of the players will come in with a with a big bounce. I mean, particularly, I imagine Adam Ida scoring the winner. Mm -hmm. Incredible, uh, yeah. And Liam Scales as well, of course. Great yeah, look, them. brilliant. Obviously, Will Smallbone playoffs, um, being so instrumental first at Hampton. Uh, as you mentioned, the Celtic boys, um, Troy Parrott when he does eventually finish the the play the playoff game, he's involved with it in Holland as well. He's, Scoring goals too, so look, it's great to see that when you have um, an end to the season like that for certain players, and it's always the case. There's some lads have disappointments, some lads have uh, big successes, and but hopefully, it's always the case. I think when they come into camp, Tony, that they fully focus then on the job in hand and put their celebrations or commiserations to one side, and they, they fully focus then on getting the getting the job done for Ireland. Well, thanks, John. Hi, John. Hi, hey, well. Can I ask you, what more do you think you need to do to convince Whoa, oh, I thought it was a fire alarm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're all yet out of here. I'm sure Sky would have a, 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 a louder fire alarm. Hey, John, what more Must be the wife, that, <coughs> that noise. What more do you think you need to do to convince the FAI that you're the man to take Ireland forward? <clears throat> it's one of those things. Look, I, I know how myself and the staff approach the last two games and what, how we went about things and obviously it'll be similar again this time round of what we want to focus on for the players to focus on themselves. Yeah, we obviously have a lot of respect for the opposition uh, but it's about focusing on ourselves too and how we can affect games as best we can to get the result um, and then whatever happens after that happens after that. The two previous games, the performances especially were very well received by everybody. 
again, we've been missing results over the past probably 18 mm. months. Is that the key thing now that you're looking to try and improve in these two games, keep that same level of performance, but also get a win and maybe a few goals? Yeah, you hope so. That's that's the key thing. For look, if you're playing against Belgium and um, you get a you get a penalty and you think Evan, I wouldn't have wanted anyone else to, to be taking it because I see him how he how he hits the ball and train and how he practices how he how he strikes the ball. So something like that is just unfortunate. But the key thing, as you mentioned, there is performance. If you keep the performance levels high, I think the results will take care of itself very soon. And I think the the key element too of keeping a good bit of experience is we, yeah, we want to get a good blend of youth involved too but the experience in the squad is very important too to get some of that back involved in the squad to get ourselves get ourselves over the line in games uh, mentioned youth can we uh, mention Jacob Ryan's had an exceptional season in France this year uh, you know, a big kind of task for him to go out to, to France to perform as well as he did I know you've been impressed by him is that somebody we can expect to see you get a few minutes yeah. Yeah, look, hopefully, hopefully that's the case. But look, as I mentioned before, that the centre backs in the team that we have are playing at really high levels too. So Jake knows that. But as I mentioned beforehand in March, the advances and strides he's took over the last year to six months has been brilliant to see, and he'll definitely um, he'll definitely be involved in the games. That's for sure. Thank hey, you, uh, John. Would you want or expect Mark Hannum to talk to the players about what's been going on? Because a few of them have obviously expressed frustration <coughs> over the last few weeks as to how long this has all dragged on. Yeah, look, Mark will be in the camp uh, like he was the last time for uh, practically nearly every all the days that we were in. So I'm sure if he feels the need to, um, obviously I'll be speaking to the players as well. But I'm sure if Mark feels the need to, he'll he will definitely he will definitely do that. And if whether it be he speaks with Seamus or he speaks with some of the more senior lads as well. Um, but if any of the lads have any issues, they'll come and talk to me as well, hopefully too. So um, without, without a doubt, they'll, I'm sure Mark will be, uh, he'll be there like he was the last time in the hotel nearly every day involved coming in and uh, chatting to people and obviously uh, trying to find out more <coughs> About the players too, because he'll he'll be meeting some of the players in the squad as well for the first time as well. For the last two games, you said that basically your role was, I guess, in some ways to not rock the boat too much to keep things uh, going as an interim. The fact that there's no more games after this before England come to town an absolutely huge game. Uh, have you uh, have you been told to do anything different? Is, are you going to put more of your own stamp on this, or what's the plan? No, it's the, it's the same scenario. I'm just trying to get them. Um, the squad together to, to be competitive in international football, to be winning football matches. Um, it's straightforward. The, f for me, it's, look, it's it's two tough games again in the sense of uh, two international teams that have obviously qualified for the tournament, been on good runs, and we have uh, a stern test first first up in the Aviva against Hungary. Tom Cannon's obviously in. Casey McIntyre has been somebody who's been linked a lot. Have you spoken to him? And yeah, uh, was he? Close with or yeah, he's very close. He's just he was um, had a couple of good conversations with him. Um, he's obviously been a little bit frustrated with uh, a couple of bad hamstring injuries, and um, he's just obviously wanting to the chance to fully get his body recovered, so he's ready for to get himself into the t into the Premier League with Leicester to get in the team. And he was very positive about committing as well, but he just felt that. Because of the, I think it was three really bad hamstrings he had during the season that he needed uh, the chance to really recuperate properly and uh, get himself ready for the pre-season with Leicester. Owen? Hang on. Yeah, Alan is obviously um, he's out of contract at the minute. Um, I spoke to him and look, it, it's a tough one for Alan. Um, look, I have lots of admiration for him in terms of he's basically he was kind of saying if there were, it's a chance to, his last kind of major contract as such, and um, if there was qualifying games or stuff like that, Alan would have been would have been involved. That's for sure. So um, he's obviously. Um, Concentrating on getting them as, as you would do a little bit in your career when you have a chance like that. He wants to make sure there's no more risks. And uh, it, the look, I, I spoke to him about it, and 
I totally, totally understand it too. It's, I, look, it's it's a frustrating one, and you were hoping, I was hoping maybe um, you, he could have got something sorted beforehand, but look, it wasn't to be, and um, he'll have to he'll have to sit these ones out. But that's that's a chance then for someone else. Um, Festy, look, he was a tough. I spoke to Festy, would have loved to have Festy Festy in the squad, but he's uh, he's just not. He's had a few physical issues. Uh, after the season, and he's just uh, he's going to have to miss out, unfortunately. Um, and you mentioned Ryan. It was just I spoke with Ryan. Um, he's obviously not been in the team recently. I went down to watch them in the when they played West Brom. Obviously, he came on uh, the night Will scored. And I just feel look, just at the minute I, I want Ryan to go get himself. Gave him, I suppose, a bit of a challenge to get himself back in that Southampton team in the Premier League, and that'll take care of itself with, with the Irish team if that's the case. But I know what Ender Stevens and Robbie Brady can do, and that's uh, that's good enough competition for me. Any further questions in the live press conference? Just one more at the back, Sean. Hi, John. How's it going? How are we doing? Uh, Josh Feely and Bossu trying to score for the first time as well. Great moments for them, and uh, Andy Moran in there too. Yeah, amazing. Um, look. The, it's one of those things. Uh, there's a couple of weddings um, in the squad as well. Uh, Mark Travers, Josh Cullen. So hopefully um, they all have a fantastic day and everything goes well for them. But they'll be back available then for the games. So um, just to, obviously it's important then. Uh, I went to see Boston play a few times. Obviously Fleet would have a few <clears throat> Irish players. Uh, I know how well he's done with the 21s too. Um, so just... And obviously, look, I know how good a player Andy Moran is too, but obviously didn't play much towards the end of the season. So just to keep them involved and see what uh, how Bossom as well settles in uh, into the group. And Josh will be, uh, obviously, Rennie Gilmartin has worked with him before and Rennie will be able to keep an eye on him and he'll be able to support the, the senior keepers involved as well. And obviously, uh, David Harrington being involved too is... Uh, I've worked with David involved with the under-21s before too and he's a really good young goalkeeper and it's just to uh, make sure we have enough competition and uh, numbers for training as well. Yeah, look, as I mentioned about, um, I know the type of player Enda is, how determined he is, how passionate he is about playing for Ireland as well, so um, once I knew... I'd, Obviously, Glenn, Glenn Whelan saw a few of his games toward the end of the season too. Um, I went and saw one of them as well myself. So, um, great to see him back healthy and fully fit. And hopefully, that remains the case. Thanks, guys. I just ask you, was Marco Mardi close? Is he in your thoughts? He's in my thoughts, but look, it's one of them. He just needs to do a bit more too, Tony. Okay. Sorry, Cullen and Travers, are they going to travel to Portugal? Yeah, they will be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. If you could sit tight, we'll just set up the next room and I'll come back for you for the print total. That'd be great. Thank you very much.